Hi, I'm Loretta Hayes from Hayes Sewing Machine Company in Wilmington, Delaware. And welcome back to our creative videos. Today, we're gonna do a fast and fun project um, that is called So Organized. Um, it is a organizational tool for putting your uh, marking tools and your rotary cutters. Um, and what's really cool about it is you not only get the pattern, but you also get the metal frame that this piece is going to fit on. So we'll put that off to the side for the moment because we'll do that at the very end. Um, you need to do this pattern. You need two fat quarters. Uh, you need a third of a yard of a lightweight fusible stabilizer or interfacing. So one of the ones that they recommended was the Pelon 906F, which is what we use to do t-shirt quilts, uh, to back the t-shirts. So you might, as a quilter, you might have some of that already. Um, and you need uh, a little bit of cotton batting uh, and some elastic and a safety pin. Everything else is in with the... the um, project. So the fabric that uh, Kathy chose for me to do this project uh, was from the Ambience uh, collection. Um, it is a kind of great zigzag type stripe um, and it comes in two different colorways. Of course you could use anything that you would like. Uh, the second piece of fabric that we did was an even weave which is a great, great blender. If you're ever looking for a blender, even you know, for quilting, where it's a little bit more interesting than a solid is, but um, it's not gonna compete with the other print, it's a wonderful line of fabrics. Comes in a lot of different colorways on there. So that's my two fabrics. Uh, we'll set those off to the side there, and we will get started. So our first thing is going to be our first uh, pocket. And there's a series of, of three pockets, so we're gonna kind of work our way down. The directions on the pattern are fabulous. Uh, I am not a direction reader, I am a picture looker at. <laughs> and so <laughs> they have great pictures, uh, and if you feel the need to read the directions, you can do that as well. So to start with, you're going to take your first fabric. This is going to be kind of the middle pocket. And they tell you to press under three and a half inches to the wrong side of the fabric. So we should be looking at pretty fabric up here and we should have uh, like a little bit of half of it covered on the back. So step number one is simply to sew that crease because we want to have it where uh, it's going to stay crisp forever when we're shoving tools in and out. We don't want it to move. So we're going to come in, we're going to change out the foot, and the presser foot, um, we're going to be using the regular presser foot, ooh, what a catch, um, a regular presser foot uh, for most of our work. But for doing this first bit of top stitching, I'm going to change to an edge stitching foot, which in the Bernina is going to be a number 10, could be a number 10, could be a number 10C, could be a, a number 10D. Um, but almost every sewing machine has an edge stitching foot. Uh, with our baby locks, uh, it's cleverly uh, named. It's an edge stitching foot. <laughs> so the big thing about this foot is it has a metal guide that runs right down the middle of the foot, um, but it does not go through the oval of the presser foot. And in doing that, we can move our needle position to wherever we would like. So when you're top stitching on these uh, pockets, we want to top stitch fairly close to the edge. So not a quarter of an inch, like more like an eighth. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna get lined up. And I'm gonna take my needle position and I'm just gonna bop it uh, two or three clicks over to the right so that as I'm stitching, I can run my fabric along that metal edge. So I'm gonna stay consistently against the edge. And we're just gonna stitch right along and we will be perfectly straight top stitching. So we can do, is it we in the camera? 
Okay, so you can do a really, really nice top stitching on there. This is fabulous. If you don't have a number 10 foot or an edge stitching foot, I use it all the time for doing things like this. If I was stitching on a pocket, if you're a fashion sewer, going around a collar or a cuff, it just makes it look like, you know, it's super, super professional on there. All right, so there is our first step. So that's easy enough to do for your first pocket. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to find our front piece, which is done with the contrasting fabric. And we're going to lay this pocket onto that background. So you should have pretty sides of the fabric facing upwards uh, for both of these. So now what we're going to do is we're going to measure down. The pattern tells us to measure down three and a quarter stitches, uh, uh, inches, excuse me, three and a quarter inches. So remember we did three and a half inches when we folded under. So what's going to happen is when we top stitch, that raw edge that we had underneath is going to be anchored hmm. down. So we're going to go ahead and come in and we're just going to stitch this. And I think what we're going to do at this point, we're just going to go back to a regular presser foot. Uh, probably for the majority of this. So we'll go back to the regular foot. Um, on my machine, I do need to tell it that. So give me just a second to do that. <laughs> Easier said than done sometimes. All right, let's go this way. There's always more than one way, right? All right, all is well. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to top stitch on the line that I have chopped. So we'll come in and we'll stitch. So we now have the top stitching line going across. And then while we're here, we're going to stitch around the edge of the pockets to make this piece one piece of fabric. That way you're not juggling multiple layers when we put the next pocket on. So we'll come in and we'll top stitch around. And really, you just want to be within a quarter inch seam. It's not super important that you're like majorly straight. Um, you're not going to see this row of stitching when we're done. We could have put the top stitching foot on to keep that eighth of an inch. What I'm doing as a visual is I'm running the edge of my fabric along the inside edge of that toe. I sometimes find it's easier if I have something hard to look at as opposed to watching the needle bounce up and down. All right, so we now have this unit done and we have our first pocket up here at the top. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to come in and we're going to get our third pocket coming in here going like this. So this piece is also one of the contrasts. So this is the even weave. <clears throat> and for the pattern, they recommended that we did the fusing for the 906F um, uh, interfacing. So I already ironed this on, and then they told us to simply go ahead and uh, press it in half, pretty sides facing out. And then on the pattern, it has us mark two and a quarter inches from the edge. So we're gonna draw a line, uh, two and a quarter inch from this edge, two and a quarter inch from that edge. And so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna line that up right with the edges of our previous run. Now what's interesting is in the pattern for doing smaller, um, you know, things like your seam ripper, that kind of thing, they wanted to have smaller pockets. So we are gonna be stitching not just along the line that I've just drawn, but all the way up to the top pocket that we did previously. So we're gonna come in and we want to take and stitch that and remember that you're going to be putting tools in here so this would be a really good a time to do some back tacking and so we're going to sew forward a little bit we're just going to come back in do a couple of stitches so i'm doing like three or four stitches on my back tack 
we're going to come down. When I get to the purple fabric, I'm going to sew about a quarter of an inch in, and I'm going to do a back tack there because once again, that's going to be the top of that pocket. And so we can come down to the bottom and then back we hop right back up to the top. And we will get lined up on the top there. So once again, a few stitches forward, hit our reverse button, back up, come forward onto the purple, about a quarter of an inch in. We'll back tack on the top of that. And stitch our way down. And I always recommend that when you're doing this kind of work, that you start at the top of the project, at the top of the pocket, as opposed to at the bottom. Um, and simply the reason being is if we have any shifting, we can shift at the bottom and just clip it off. If we shift at the top, people are going to be able to see it. All right, so we're looking good here. Uh, once again, we want to go ahead and stitch around the edge of the fabric just to once again make that pocket a, um, a single piece of fabric. We don't want to have multiple layers of fabric if we can help it. And I got it. This is what she recommended in the directions. And I got to say, I really do like the idea of it. Um, so much easier than, say, pinning it or clipping it at this point. And you won't get any little bubbles at the end. All right, so we are cruising along here. Now we have two sets of pockets. So we've got this, these guys up here that would do for shorter things. And then we have the bottom pockets, which will go for longer things. So think your marking pens, your rotary cutter, that kind of thing. All right, so we are now flipping over to look at the pictures on the other side. <laughs> so our last pocket is going to be back to the ambiance fabric. Um, and it is a much larger pocket. So you look at this and you go, hmm, how is this going to work? Because this isn't going to fit. Did you cut it so, wrong? Yes, exactly. Did I cut it <laughs> wrong? But no, we haven't. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to fold our fabric in half lengthwise. Uh, pretty size of the fabric going out. And then we're going to come back in. And this time, instead of top stitching at the top of the pocket, we're going to come down about a half an inch. And we are going to top stitch there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Got a frog. So we'll stitch across. I'm simply lining up right at the, the half inch line on my plate. And we are to the end there. So what we've just done is we've just created a casing for our elastic because these pockets are going to be more three dimensional. So we're going to take a quarter of an inch of elastic <coughs> and we are going to take a safety pin. The safety pin is um, just going to help us feed the elastic through. The elastic is eight inches long. And so we're going to pop it in. And I am a fan of using a bodkin for feeding elastic. Uh, but in this case, with the half inch casing, a bodkin will not fit. So the, uh, the safety pin is absolutely what we want. So we're feeding the elastic in, we're just sliding it along. And at a certain point here, we're going to run the risk of pulling that <laughs> elastic all the way in. So what we want to do is we want to leave about a quarter of an inch out of the elastic. And then we're going to take a straight pin and we're going to put the straight pin in there. Um, it's only it's only an eight inch piece of elastic. So if you pull it all the way through, it's not a crisis. But at the same time, it would be nice if we didn't have to do anything. So we're going to come in. We've got our elastic through. And now what we want to do is we want to kind of even up the elastic. 
Make it look pretty. Yeah, we want it to be even all the way across. So my suggestion is at this point you come in and you do just a couple of stitches, maybe a little back tack on the end that we just finished feeding through. And then let's come back over here and let's do the same over here. And because we left a quarter of an inch sticking out, I know that I'm actually stitching on elastic here. If it's hiding in, you, then we have a little bit of an issue. So you can see now we have that there. And a little trick is if you grab a hold of both ends and kind of pull, it will equal out automatically. That's clever. Clever, clever. Clever, clever. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to come in and we would like to get this lined up in the center. So we'll come in the center and we're going to top stitch down the line, which I've marked and they have told me to mark it. And we're going to start once again at the top and once again we want to back tack. And so for myself here, what I'm doing is doing my back tack the same length as my casing. So we want to have that nice and anchored and then we're just going to line up straight going down to the bottom. All right, so we're looking good here. So what's going to happen is the pocket is going to be three dimensional this way. So we're going to line up and just do a quick little clip on the end. So I'm moving the end of the elastic uh, to the side. I'm making sure that I'm going to line up down here at the bottom. And then on each side, we're going to do a little pleat. And she is very mathematical, um, you know, making sure that you've got so much here and so much there and, just and slam whatnot. It down. Yeah, pretty, <laughs> pretty much you can just do it. it. It's good. It's all good. So if we come in and we've got that lining up, the only thing that you really want to pay attention to is you would really like to make sure that the tuck that is on the corner side, that it's not within the quarter inch seam allowance. So we have that going on there. And I'm just going to put a clip on that tuck and put a clip on this tuck. And then we're going to do the same thing over here on this side. And we'll do the same thing over here. All right. So now that I have that done, I'm just going to take a, <clears throat> a quick look. Going to make sure, number one, that I don't have um, the tuck in the quarter inch uh, area for the seam allowance. I'm going to look at the center, like for the center here, on this side I have it about three-eighths of an inch away, and this side I have about a quarter, and the OCD in me doesn't like that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to re-tuck that, and I'm going to make sure that those are more uh, even. But that's all the more there is to it, and there's not really a lot of math to it. You're just tucking it under. We want the pocket to stick out. All right, so at that point, we're going to hop in. And we're going to stitch all the way around the pocket. So once again, we want to be within that quarter inch seam allowance. So roughly about an eighth. So we'll come, come down to the corner. We'll get rid of our clip. Flip around. And stitch over your tucks. Turn our corner, and up we go to the top. All 
and now we have these lovely pockets that stick out. Kind of cool. I was thinking when I was doing uh, looking at the directions clips. for this. The clips. Your clips, you could use them to hold. <laughs> what, what are you looking for, girl? <laughs> the clips could go in there. Oh, for yes. <laughs> Yes, Pam says you could store your clips in there. There you go. <laughs> um, we're having a little miss uh, communication <laughs> sister-wise. Usually we're on the same lump, wavelength. All right. So I was thinking with these pockets, back to my original thought. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, well. Is how cool would this be as a pocket idea for, say, something like a tote bag that has a gusset in it? If you were to put a pocket like this that's elasticized at the top and make it a little bit deeper, a little bit taller, how cool would it be that you could use this pocket to maybe put a water bottle in a tote bag? So go. it's the same technique, but, you know, just change it up the size. All right, so last thing we need to do on the front of this organizer is to make the little pin cushion. So the pin cushion, they have you cut your fabric. Okay, we're going to come in, we're going to fold our fabric right sides together this time. Hmm. So everything else that we've been doing, we have done wrong sides together. Uh, so now we're going to come in, we're going to do a quarter inch seam. And we're going to sew on one end. And we'll flip it over and we'll sew on the other. Okay, mm okay. So once we have that done, we're going to come into the corner and we're going to do a quick little clip across the corner. We're going to flip it around and we're going to poke out the corner. And what's nice is it's not so deep in. We can just kind of do it with our fingernail. You could use your um, point turner. And I'm just going to give this a quick press. You, Pam, you don't need to come. <clears throat> mm, Kid oak. And then what we've done is we've made a pocket that has three sides done. <clears throat> and we're going to take, and I'll take that water. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. So much better. And we're going to take our cotton batting, our scraps that they ask for, and we're going to tuck them in, and that's going to create our pincushion. So get them pushed all the way down to the bottom. Okay, mm doke. And so what we're going to do is we're going to place that pin cushion so that it's facing the top of the um, organizer, so the tops of our pockets, and we're putting it right sides together with the front. Hmm. You want to make sure that you're kind of evenly spaced. You should have about a half an inch of fabric on either side. And so we're going to come in and we're going to go ahead and stitch this. And this we really want to do... Um, once again, a little bit inside that quarter inch seam allowance. I have about three or four layers of um, batting in there, is what she recommended. Um, in my mind, I was like, oh, I'd like to make it thicker because I always like to change a pattern. Um, but you would, if you do too many thicknesses, your presser foot's going to be really wonky, kind of half up on one side. So it's a good amount to, to do there. All right, so we are cruising along here. Now we need to come in and we need to grab uh, the layer of um, fusible interfacing that they recommend. So once again, you're going to do your uh, 906F. And what we want 
is we want the fusible side of the stabilizer of the interfacing to face <coughs> the inside, the right side of our project. So in your mind, you're going, Loretta, that can't be right. And that's, and that's fine. So what we want is we want coming in, what's gonna happen here is we want it to come around. So we're gonna come around and it's going to go like this. So, excuse me, and I, <clears throat> I've got it backwards. I needed to check it out. So you want the non-fusible side facing the front, okay? And the fusible side should be facing up to you. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna stitch <clears throat> that on. And now we wanna do a quarter inch seam. And this I thought was just brilliant. Now that we've got that on, we're gonna flip it over. The quarter inch seam is gonna flip up and we're gonna fuse the stabilizer to the back. That so is clever. It, isn't it clever? Um, so it serves two purposes here. Number one, it gets the bottom of our um, unit all nice and clean. And number two, it will stiffen up our uh, pockets from the back. And we didn't have to sew through all that stiffness. We added the stiffness at the back. So over to the ironing board we go. And just so you know, she is actually ironing. <laughs> and when you're fusing, interfacing, once again, it is a fusing action as opposed to a um, ironing action. So your iron is gonna go down kind of one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, and then you're gonna pick the iron up and you're gonna move it over. And we wanna just make sure that we have it fused really well. When you're fusing, we good? Mm -hmm. um, when we're fusing, try to avoid the, oh, is it fused kind of thing? Um, because what will happen is while it's warm, it would, it would still peel. So go ahead and, and let it cool off a little bit and then you can check to make sure you've got it fused. But you can see what's happened here is now we have a nice clean edge down here at the bottom. Cool. And we've got our uh, pockets now stiffened a little bit more. All right, so we have one last step to do. Dun, 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 dun. And so basically the back of our item is done the same way as I've just done here. I've already fused it. So this is the back. Uh, it was out of the even weave. I took it. I put the non-fusible side of the interfacing to here. I sewed the quarter inch seam, flipped it over, and pressed it. Exactly what we just did on this project. Then all we're going to do is we're going to come in and we're going to line everybody up, put some clips in, and this time we are going to do a full quarter inch seam. So all that little top stitching that we did to hold our projects together, um, they're all going to be in the seam allowances at that point. So make sure we get the corners lined up. And then off we go, quarter inch seaming. Do a little back tack at the end. Because remember that's going to go over the metal frame so we don't want it to pop any stitches. to your corner, pick up your foot, pivot.
pivot again. And we're in the home stretch. And don't forget to back tack at the end. So we would like to get rid of some of the bulk at the top. We'll give it a little clip. I had a little bit of interfacing hanging off the edge so you can clean up the edges here. And then we're going to flip this puppy around. Looking so nice. I love it. Trim up a couple of threads. And now we need our rack. So this is the wire rack that comes with it. And what we're going to do is we're going to place that over top. And it's snug because you don't want it to be sliding off the, the rack. Pam's going to come and help hold the rack for me. There we go. And it slides on. And then look at that. And look at that pink we cushion. We have our sewing organizer. So at this point, we can come in, we can put our pens in there. If we have a shorter one, we could go ahead and put that in the pocket there. Uh, Pam's. Thing of putting the clips in there <laughs> we've got going on there and we can put our pins in on the bottom for the well pressure. done so fabulous fabulous pattern uh, called so organized and remember that everything you need uh, for the structure of it is included with the pattern so you get the pattern and the wire rack and then the directions two fat quarters and some elastic and you are good to go. <laughs> Thanks. We'll see you next time.